Good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Well, it's January of 2021. A new year has rolled around. And oftentimes, when the new year rolls around, people think about calendars. I remember just a few years ago when calendars were readily available at bookstores, more so than they are now. And we would always be thinking about, oh, we got to get that next calendar. What kind of picture calendar is it going to be? Is it going to be, you know, flowers and Thomas Kincaid paintings or typewriters or motorcycles or whatever you like, right? A lot of different themes out there. Cats. It's the new year. I haven't made a new calendar this year. Last year, I made a concerted effort to put together a photo calendar, a typewriter-themed photo calendar. And um, one year, I actually used the previous year's typewriter calendar simply by printing out new calendar sheets and taping them over the old ones and keeping the old photos on the old calendar itself. So I could do that. But Yesterday during the uh, live stream of the Typewriter Club, I started playing around with typing my own calendars. And I started with the Hermes 3000 and this Royal Mercury. And then later on, I started playing around a little bit more with it and realized, you know, this is kind of a serious uh, little project. You could actually come up with some really nice custom formatted calendars for things like day planners or a, a yearly calendar that you could hang up on your refrigerator with a magnet, or even if you wanted to type up a month or two at a time on a letter-sized sheet of paper and have it available. It's a really handy idea. The other thing that I noticed about calendars is oftentimes it's difficult to put everything in a calendar. There ends up being like specialty calendars. Like if you're on a diet, you end up with a diet calendar, maybe tracking calories or whatever, or an exercise calendar. You write line when you exercise every day or whatever. So a lot of times there's a need for a specialty calendar that you may not want to clutter up your normal good calendar on the wall with all the special information. So another reason to type up your own custom calendars. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to play around with typing our own calendars. Stay tuned. One of the obvious things about manual typewriters is they are monospaced machines. So all the characters are on an even rectilinear grid. And this is the one that I perfected, so to speak, yesterday. And then this was what the month of, uh, that was January of 2021. This was February's. But I actually started with um, some tinkering around with what kind of graphical symbols can I use to make uh, a calendar, to make a grid-like image. And the limitation with with uh, typewriters, of course, is you only have a fixed, limited number of graphical characters that you can use to make your grids and your dividing lines and all that. And so it's kind of a little bit of a challenge. It's not quite as capable as ASCII art, which is what people used back in the day to make uh, interesting graphical images from text files, right? Because the ASCII character set has more characters than the typical manual typewriter does. So, with that said, you have to get a little bit creative when you're using the characters available to you on a typewriter to make these kind of grids. So, another option available to you to make grid lines for a calendar is to use the little holes or notches in your uh, card guide, and then you can twist the platen to make vertical lines, move your carriage back and forth to make horizontal lines, and if you use a neat pin and do it well enough, you can get really nice looking grid lines. The problem I have with that method, personally, is a lot of times when you do that, the location of the little notches or holes in the card guide for your pen or pencil don't necessarily correspond to the print lines. So you can make nice grids, but you may not be able to predictably fit the characters as well into that grid. So for the purposes of continuity, therefore, I'm going to be presenting ways of making calendars strictly using the character set on the typewriter, and we're not going to be using the little line drawing feature of the typewriter. That being said, you can go ahead and do that. Obviously, you do whatever you want. You might have fun with that. But for today, we're going to use just the typewritten character set for our grid lines. Well, this first calendar I made is for a half size sheet of paper, a letter size sheet of paper cut in half. This was just an initial test, uh, so I have this off center to the left. You may want to 
off-center it to the right, depending on whether it's going to be on the left-facing or right-facing part of a page. Uh, and this gives you room for binding, whatever kind of binding system that your day planner might use. Or you could center it up, and if you're not binding at all, if you want to just tape it to your refrigerator or put it in your office somehow on the wall or whatever. Uh, so the layout, of course, being a monthly calendar, you have seven columns, one for each day of the week. I'm allowing in this layout, this is a pica sized typeface, the Royal Mercury itself. Um, I'm giving five empty columns in each of the date fields for this, the width of it. And then there is a column dividing them up that makes the lines. And so I'm using left parentheses and right parentheses for the left and right uh, edges of the grid. I'm using asterisks for the inner uh, column lines that divide up the, the days of the week. And then I'm using underscore or underlining for the horizontal lines. And then the top line of each day, I'm putting in the a two number uh, designation of the day of the month. I like the two number designation so it keeps the formatting consistent from day to day. For me, I like that. So the header up on top of the days of the week is a single line, and I'm underscoring it, and I'm putting two letter abbreviations for the days of the week. The way this worked for me to start this is I started typing this line with the days of the week. I started the left parentheses, spaced over five spaces, did the asterisk, did that, and then finally at the end I did the right parentheses and then I pushed the carriage back and did the underlining for the line underneath and then pushed the carriage back and did the days of the week. Then pushed the carriage back, I back rolled the carriage one full line and did the underlining for the top line. Keeping in mind you want to move over one space, you don't want to underline above the parentheses uh, just for the sake of making it neater looking. So that's how I started it. And then, of course, I, I go down two full spaces and start the horizontal lines in each box. And the way I did that is I put it in shift lock and I, I'm simply able to do parentheses, five spaces, asterisk, five spaces, asterisk, keep going. The last one, five spaces, parentheses. Before I finish the line, I push the carriage back and do my days of the week. I keep doing it the same way for the next three lines. So on this bottom line of the top row, I again, I'm in shift lock mode. I do the parentheses, asterisks, and when I get done here at the right, I push the carriage back, and then I do the underscore in caps lock, and that draws the line. It's neater and easier to do it that way, less error prone. If you tried to do it all in one pass, you would have to go backspace, underline, or asterisk, uh, and you would end up making mistakes. I certainly did several times trying it that way. It's just quicker to push the carriage back and, and type the other characters. Then when you get to the, the top of the next uh, row, um, I do this in uh, n out of caps lock mode. So I'll shift for each character that needs to be shifted, which are the parentheses and asterisks. Otherwise, the numbers are lowercase. And it's just easier and less error prone to uh, shift for each one of these that you need to do. And then when you go down here to the next ones, of course, you're going to be doing uh, shift lock, as I described above. Uh, so this initial test, I uh, typed out the entire grid, but you don't necessarily need to type out these empty uh, boxes for the unused days of the month. Here is a little typographical error you might notice. Remember when I mentioned ab above here, when you're doing your, your uh, top lines to space in one to start, you can see where I didn't space in one, and it looks kind of messy having that underscore right above the parentheses. So uh, fortunately, though, I did make a number of mistakes that I corrected with correction tape because this is bright white paper and the correction tape works pretty good on it. So this is a little layout that works pretty good for two months per page and a day planner kind of sized uh, booklet. But there's not a lot of room in each date to write any notes. You're going to have to scribble your notes pretty small in order to fit them in there. And so you might want a, a bigger date calendar. And so this next one that I made is a 
a full letter size sheet of paper. And this is February 2021. This was basically laid out very similar to the way I did the other one. Uh, what I did here is I have nine spaces horizontally per date with, of course, a, uh, you know, the columns of symbols that separate them and form the grid lines. I started my margin at 10 and ended it at 80 with, with this pica typeface machine. And so that gives me uh, nine spaces plus the tenth space is the line between them. And that makes a nice sized box about an inch wide uh, for taking notes. It works pretty well. Again, I'm only giving uh, one line for the title heading of the days of the week. And I think it makes it rather efficient. If you look at the layout of this, I can actually, if I started the day of the month line up here, the title, if I started at the very top of the page, I would actually have room for a second calendar down below it. Here you can see the full page. Yeah, if I started this about three quarters of an inch higher, I could have two months on a full size page. And you notice I've started the layout centered more to the right, so I have room for my whole binding, however I'm going to be binding this if I do bind it in, in, indeed. Um, another thing I did here is at the end of the month I did not type out the empty boxes. Um, I just made the right margin using right parentheses. I just put those in the end of the box here to even it up. I think it's a pretty nice layout. It works really well for a monthly calendar. Gives you enough room to write notes in each uh, date if you need to. And you can fit um, two of these per page if you needed to be really economical with it. Otherwise, you could do one of these every month. But let's suppose you want an even bigger calendar. Maybe you would like to have a monthly calendar going like this. Well, let's do a bigger monthly calendar then. Well, the first thing you might notice, letter size sheet of paper, I'm not going to be able to fit it into this standard width carriage machine. So I'm going to need a wide carriage machine and I have just the machine for this project. The Smith Corona Galaxy 12. If you have a wide carriage machine in your collection and you haven't gotten on very well with it over the years, you thought it was just too big, well this might be one project where you're going to appreciate having a wide carriage machine if you want to do a full size calendar in landscape orientation. Yes indeed. Okay, so um, I need seven columns. I would like them to be 13 characters wide, so that's a total of 91 character wide typing field. But I'm starting, my left margin is starting at um, a margin of 10. And so the right margin, uh, 10 and 91 is 101. So the right margin has to be set at 101 in order to get my uh, 91 character wide uh, field. Okay, so our paper is eight and a half inches wide. The typewriter has six lines per inch vertically. So on an eight and a half inch wide paper, you have a total of 51 lines to work with. So I need six rows, and I'm thinking six times seven is 42. It'll, so seven line high boxes, and that leaves 51 minus 42, is that leaves nine lines for a top and bottom margin. So I may do like four lines on top, five on the bottom uh, to make it fairly well centered on the page vertically. Okay, so I'm gonna set the left margin to 10. Let's set this to 101, like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna type my left parentheses. There, okay. Now, I'm going to start back at the parentheses, and I've already typed it, so I move one to the right. I've already, I'm already on one, so I'm going to count the rest of my 13. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, etc. Okay, so I have six asterisks, but they define seven columns here. So what I want to do is next, in the same line, I want to type the days of the week. So I'm going to go six spaces over.
Then I'm just going to push the carriage back to the left. I'm going to space one over, and then I'm going to go shift lock and do my underscoring. Okay, now I'm going to push it back to the left, go up one full line, space over one space, and underscore again for the top line. Okay, go down two lines. I'm ready for my next line. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it in, uh, not in the shift lock mode. So I'm gonna shift for my left parentheses, 12 over. And at the right one, I use the parentheses. And now, if you were typing a particular month of the year, you could go back and start your numbering of your days of the month. Um, so I'm going to start this one as, let's say, this is January. So let's just do January, shall we? January starts uh, first was on a Friday. So we'll start that. Four spaces over, we'll go zero, 01 and zero, 02. Okay, now we're going to go to shift lock mode and we'll go parentheses 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. And we'll continue that to make up the first row of our calendar. Okay, because we want our boxes to be seven lines high, uh, we are now uh, starting the seventh line. So we're going to just do in the shift lock mode our parentheses, our 12 spaces afterwards, and our asterisk. And our right parentheses. And then instead of a carriage return, we're just going to push the carriage back space over once to the right and now we'll do our underscores and that finishes the first row of our calendar actually seven lines high and it looks nice there's plenty of room to write stuff in here right little notes and calendar events or whatnot so we will carriage return over and start our second row. Okay, we're ready for the uh, last part of the third row of boxes here. And one of the other things you can do is you can use your tab function on your typewriter instead of spacing over. So we're in the shift lock mode. We do our parentheses tab and asterisk. Oh, make sure the tabs are set right. And that's a lot quicker. Right there. January 2021. Very cool. Well, if I'm going to critique myself, I would start off by saying that I should have actually moved this down a little bit so I have uh, less wasted space at the bottom. And that would give me room up here on top to hole punch in the middle, a single hole enabling me to hang this on the wall with a thumbtack. And that means that every month throughout the year of 2021, I can simply make my own calendar on this typewriter. Well, so my wife has been also asking for a single page yearly calendar. This is just a calendar that shows all the days of the month for the whole year. So I'm going to lay this out on a letter size sheet of paper in portrait orientation. It'll be three columns of four months. Okay, so for my single page yearly calendar, um, it's going to be 68 characters wide. Um, this carriage goes from 0 to 110. I'd like to center it evenly on the carriage so the pressure rollers, the feed rollers, are centered on the paper so it should feed a little bit easier. So the middle of the carriage is 55. 
And so I want to go half of 68, which is 34, either side of the center line to put my margin. So that goes down to 21 and up to 89. That should center the paper uh, on the carriage and center the layout on the paper as well. My uh, paper guide is right here, about 12. Okay, so. Okay, so because we have red days of the week, a black underline, maybe we need black in the color of the name of the month. All right. So here's my yearly calendar. This is actually the first time I've ever done it is on camera here. <clears throat> so obviously I would probably put a little bit more vertical space, another line or two between the name of the month below it and the end of the previous month. It's a little bit encroaching here, but other than that, it actually looks pretty nice. It's a nice layout having the uh, red year underlined in black, the capital abbreviations for the months, having the weeks in red underlined in black. It's just a nice layout. It makes a nice simple layout. It's less than a full letter size. This one's maybe about two-thirds the height of a letter size sheet of paper. So I can cut it off and it'll it'll stick right on the side of the fridge with a magnet nice and easy. Hopefully my wife will like it. Well hey let's review what we've done here. So first we have the small day planner size calendars. You can fit two months to a sheet. Next we have the full letter size calendar oriented in portrait mode. You should be able to fit two of these to a sheet. If you start at the very top of the page, this gives you nice room for writing notes in each day. Then we have the full size landscape monthly calendar that gives you plenty of room for writing notes. You can type up one of these every month, pin it to your wall or your bulletin board, and you have yourself a calendar that you can make new months every month until perpetuity. And finally, you have the one year at a glance calendar that you can post up on your refrigerator or wherever, and it gives you a nice handy little reference for what day does that fall on? You know, doing calendars like this is really the forerunner of what became known as ASCII art. Back in the early days, the pre-graphical processor days of the computer revolution, when essentially typewriters that had a subset of the ASCII character set, you could do simple character-based graphics like this. These were done for decades with computers before the era of the personal computer. It was common to see these kind of simple graphics done on the fanfold printer paper, for instance, back in the day. But this is a lot of fun to do with a typewriter. This especially gives you something to do with a wide carriage machine. If you have one of these in your collection and you're thinking, man, I don't know what I'm going to really do with a wide carriage machine. I mean, I could do newsletters, like two-page layout kind of newsletters and poetry chat books or something. But yeah, you can do yourself a full-size monthly calendar with one of these. Isn't that great? Or any typewriter you know, that takes a standard width sheet of paper. Yeah, you can do any kind of a layout like that. Hey, this gives you guys plenty of room to start with this. Continue with it. Discover your own techniques. Discover some new ideas related to this. Post them down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And uh, yeah, it's wintertime. It's January. It's kind of cloudy day. It's getting cold here in Albuquerque. Good day to stay indoors, have a warm beverage, and type up some calendars for this year. All right, guys. I wish you stay well. Stay creative. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.